Hi everyone, I'm Terry Stevens Ayers from the Book Lab here at the Hutch and I use the pronoun she, her. And this is our office space here. And our lab is this way, so. This is Melinda Okoto. <laughs> She's working on checking in samples for our COVID study. It's called COVID Watch, and it's a surveillance study of people who are at high risk for getting COVID because of their professions. So they send us weekly nasal swabs, and then we have an at-home blood device, and they send us blood samples once a month, uh, and we're monitoring them to understand better how COVID infection looks. So right now she's disinfecting all of the packages and getting ready to open them. So we have almost uh, 250 people on study. So we're getting 250 of these a week. <laughs> so it's a lot. <laughs> and we're following the people for six months. And then here, this is Brenda Okoto. And she is working on getting ready to process a blood sample from COVID Watch. So we asked the subjects to give us a big blood draw at the beginning of the study. And then they give us another blood draw if they turn positive for COVID. Um, and then we'll get one at the end of the study. And it gives us an opportunity to study T cell immunity to the virus. Um, and then the smaller blood samples that we get give us a chance to study antibody immunity to the virus. So now Melinda's going to be opening up these packages inside the hood. So this is, we call this a hood. Um, and the reason that we do everything inside the hood is that there's the possibility that these samples can be infectious. And so we do everything in as safe a way as possible. So you can see that Melinda is fully protecting her body with her lab coat, her gloves, she's got on goggles, she's got on her face mask, and she's working inside this controlled airflow environment that helps keep her safe because these packages come directly from the homes of people who might be infected with coronavirus. And so it's super important that we keep her safe. So as she opens the packages, she decontaminates everything inside. We're going through alcohol like crazy right now, trying to keep everything safe. So she's spraying things down. Can you maybe hold one up and just show what it looks like? So this is a nasal swab sample. Just got there. Do we have a blood sample in the other? Um, no, box? it's another study. Oh, it's a different study. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. So we'll have those along. So she's gonna. We have everything's barcoded. So she bark scans it in, and it makes it really easy for us to keep track of things and and everything. Um, everything has a uh, previously assigned unique barcode. So COVID Watch um, is a surveillance study of high exposure um, professionals. Who, so in the course of doing their job, they're just exposed more than other people. So they're healthcare workers, grocery store workers, bus drivers, people like that, what we consider to be essential workers. And they're recruited through um, uh, ads on the internet and through clinics and community organizations and, and they come to a web portal and then they answer a set of, of screening questions and then we select people from the study uh, from the answers to the questions and so we're preferentially enrolling people who are most highly impacted so we're recruiting especially in underrepresented minority communities because those are the communities that are not underrepresented in the impacts of COVID they're, in fact they're overrepresented in the impacts of COVID um, we have both uh, Spanish and English language websites. Um, and so uh, we're hoping to get a broad spectrum of the population uh, as part of this trial. And basically we monitor people every week. They send us a nasal swab from home um, and once a month they send us a little blood sample from home in this uh, amazing device, which is called the Tasso um, device. And you can see here, it's got like a little tube on the end of it that, um, uh, let they basically stick it on their arm and then they can get a little bit of serum out of it and then they can um, send that directly to us in the little vial in a prepaid box and so we can process that and isolate their serum here to do research and ask questions about um, the their antibodies and their blood and stuff like that so uh, and then we're also getting big blood draws from them so that we can study their cellular immunity so we're looking at lots of different angles of the their immune response to um, SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID. 
So my current role in the lab um, is as a lab manager, so I'm the one who kind of runs the lab in uh, the absence of our PI, I'm our principal investigator, Michael Boat. And so uh, that means mentoring our trainees, helping them with their projects, making sure that everything is running smoothly. Um, and my background that got me this far, so I um, have a bachelor's degree in biology, and from there I spent a little bit of time growing HIV and test kits. Uh, for test kits, which gave me the skills in viral and tissue culture that I needed to get a job here at the Hutch, um, where I knew that I wanted to have a career that was in research. And then I took a break in the middle and uh, worked here part-time and got a master's degree in wildlife science because I love um, studying uh, animals and I was particularly interested in salamanders. And what I decided in the end was that I could look for salamanders on the weekend, but that I really missed the um, the patient-oriented research that we were doing here. And so I decided to return here and do this work instead for my career. And so that's uh, that's why I'm doing what I'm doing here. I'm a nerd kid. Like I was always a big old nerd um, who, from the time that I was a little kid, knew that I loved animals, was interested in being a zookeeper. Um, I come from a blue collar background and I didn't, uh, didn't have professional role models around me. An aspiration to be a scientist, um, particularly a scientist who got a PhD and ran my own lab, was not something that I was exposed to until I got into college. Um, and uh, for a number of reasons, I decided that that wasn't the best fit for me. Personally, I feel like this is where my skills are best used, um, this is a technical person in the lab. And so, but my love for science has always been there, just always been curious about the natural world and why things are the way they are. So I'm working on this uh, really cool platform called VeerScan, and what VeerScan does is it allows us to take just a little tiny bit of someone's blood, which then has all of the antibodies in there that someone might have formed against any viruses that they've been exposed to previously. So this technology allows us to extract the um, antibodies from that person's blood using a phage display library, and then we can sequence them using next generation sequencing, and it lets us know what someone's total viral exposure is over the history of their life. So you'll know every single common cold this person has ever had? Pretty much, if they still got antibodies to it, then we'll be able, we should be able to detect it. So, And then we're asking questions like, does prior viral exposure make you more likely to be infected by a different virus like HIV, for example, or something like that? So I've been at Fred Hutch for a long time. Uh, I started here in 1992, so it's uh, 28 years. Um, and I've actually worked with the Department of Infectious Disease Sciences the whole time, uh, and pretty much in this laboratory, although the leadership of the lab has changed. Um, I'm very interested in the work that we're doing here. So we're focused on um, identifying people who are at risk for infection, um, and then trying to figure out how to keep them from getting infected, if they get infected um, by a viral infection, how can we keep them from getting sicker or dying? And the work that we do in the lab has really focused on um, how we can boost the immune response to the viruses, how we can monitor people's immune function in response to the viruses to help guide our decision making. So our research is very patient-centered, and I think that's one of the things that I really like about it. It's very motivating to get out of bed in the morning when you know that you're going to be directly helping people with the research that you're doing. And the people that we are helping are primarily those who have weak immune systems because they're being treated for cancer, um, usually with a stem cell transplant where you have a cancer of the blood and the treatment that you get to wipe out the cancer in your blood kills your bone marrow, which is where your immune system comes from. And so then you need to get rescued with a new immune system from a donation we used to do bone marrow transplants, now they're stem cell transplants that are slightly different, but basically it's the same concept. So while you're getting your new immune system grown, then you're very vulnerable to infection. And, and so that's our space that we work in, and that's why we're here at a cancer institute, because people who get treated for cancer can survive their cancer, but be um, taken out by an infectious disease. And that's why our, uh, the research that we do is so critical to this field. Yeah, so I just graduated from UW. I majored in biology over there. And uh, I wanted to come here and work at the Hutch because I just felt like I wanted to see what I was learning in, in the classroom, how it's applied to real life. And um, there's a lot of different things that I've learned in class. And then I come here and I get to apply that. So that's really nice. Um, also, research is a really good way to get a glimpse into like the world of science as a student. 
So that was really cool. Um, and then afterwards, I'm hoping to apply to medical school in the next few years. Um, I'm getting some experience here. I get to see this side of medicine and then uh, hopefully that'll kind of apply to uh, my future in, in medicine. And, and were you always interested in science? Uh, I got interested in science in high school. That was, it was my favorite subject. Um, it was what I liked to do. It was always super interesting to me. Uh, I liked science and I also was playing sports in high school. And I think that that's what really got me interested in science and in medicine especially because I kind of connected those two and saw that I could, uh, I could have a career in medicine and um, do different things. I got injured a lot, so I was in the hospital a lot, I was in the doctor's office, I was in physical therapy and things like that. So I just kind of saw the connection there and I saw that uh, I could have a, a future in this. What'd you, what'd you play? Play basketball. Awesome. Yeah. Go girl. <laughs> So uh, a daily a day in the lab consists of we start out doing the COVID watch study, which is what we're working on right now. Um, so that takes up most of our mornings. We sanitize everything, we open the packages, and then we have to get a shipment out uh, at a certain time. Uh, we also do blood processing for that. So we get these little tubes of blood and then we have to process those and store those in the fridge. Um, and then after the COVID watch, I'll do some specimen processing. So there's various different protocols that we're working on. There's lots of different studies that we're working on. It's also uh, processing. So we get blood samples, so we get nasal swabs and stuff like that. And we process those. Um, then afterwards, there's a lot of maintenance that we do around the lab. So I'll prepare reagents, I'll store different samples and things like that. And I also work on the clinical side. So I'll go there and prepare some kits for the COVID study that we send out to patients. Working on flow cytometry right now, we're preparing some cells for a flow cytometry assay, which uh, studies the cellular responses to viruses. Um, we're adding some media right now. The fluorescent labels are photosensitive, so they degrade in the light, so we have to do it in the dark. Any sort of advice maybe you wish you had gotten when you were in high school? Um, I think my biggest advice just coming from me is just not to feel intimidated when you're uh, in these different spaces, when you're in science. Uh, personally for me, since high school, um, I'm usually like the only person who looks like me in those classrooms and uh, it can be a little intimidating to be honest, uh, especially when you get to college. But I think that kind of serves as a reminder that I need to be there because there need to be people like me in science. Um, so more than anything, just know that when you're going to science or when you're doing any other career, all you really need is to like science and all you need is to want to be there to uh, pursue that career. So I'm a lab aide. I started this position as a student. So I'm just here kind of helping out in the lab, doing a lot of the just basic lab procedures. Um, the typical lab day would be, we right now we're doing this COVID watch study. So it's a lot of that going on. We get a big shipment of samples each morning. So we begin with disinfecting everything and then we, um, we have to send out the nasal samples. Then we have to process a lot of the blood samples. Um, we do a lot of labeling for that. It takes a lot of time. Um, and then we have to store those in our freezers. Um, and also we have some stool samples that we have to store along with those. Some other blood samples that we also have to store. Um, so that takes about most of my day a lot of times. So yeah, it's super important for us to like be very accurate and store all these samples the correct way because they're basically the whole studies to get these samples and do whatever needs to be done with them to like, for it to contribute to the study. Okay. 
Okay, so I just graduated from the University of Washington. Um, I studied general biology. It was always just kind of something I was super interested in. Uh, ever since high school, I was always drawn towards science. I think high school was more so chemistry, but then I got into college and chemistry was a lot of math, which was not <laughs> my strongest suit. So I was then drawn more to biology. And this job, um, it was just something I, it was, um, sorry, what year was it? Junior year is when I um, started working here. And it was just the perfect job. I mean, I was studying biology and then I was coming to work and like doing the same stuff I was studying. So it was super interesting for me to kind of apply those things I was learning in school and we're doing the same stuff here. Um, and I was also learning a lot here about the same kind of stuff. So it was just like the perfect job and it, it's super close to the school. So yeah, that's kind of how I came to be. So now I'm transitioning into the workforce. Um, I do eventually want to get a master's in public health. So kind of stepping away from the lab and kind of these in the science and kind of stepping, taking a step back um, into public health, which is kind of more general, like just looking at uh, the health of our society, basically. Um, so l working here, it was kind of different from what I want to do, but I do think it really helped a lot with like me learning about just the 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 scientific process and all that kind of stuff it was yeah it's been really cool, cool. so are you gonna work a few years before doing grad school or yeah so i'm i'm looking for a job right now actually um i'm trying to kind of do something more related to grad school and hopefully in maybe like two years i'll be able to apply and start that like, journey. Are you going to apply at the UW Public Health or are you going to? Um, I do. I kind of want to go to another state. So maybe like California or something, but we'll see. I'm not sure yet. Uh, with the other studies, we do a lot more processing. So what Mercy's doing right now, which is just like just going through the protocols and the uh, centrifuging, aliquoting, pipetting, all that kind of stuff. Um, which that that's a lot more fun for me because <laughs> you get to like play with the blood or like other stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I do do a lot of processing also. So when you're processing, what do you exactly, what are you trying to get? You have a blood sample and then what is, what is it you want to do to have that be at the end? Right, so we're trying to get the, what we call is a PBMC, so we got the white blood cells from the, most of the samples. We also collect serum, plasma, um, I can't do anything else, but those are like the main things we usually collect and then we store those in our freezers. So we have a huge amount of samples just stored in our freezers for different studies. We did it last summer. We did a intracellular cytokine assay, which probably sounds complicated if you don't know. <laughs> you can say flow cytometry. Yeah. Flow cytometry, so just analyzing um, patients who went through liver transplants for, um, for CMV activation, I guess. Um, and can't show the data. Yeah, you can show the data. Yeah. So we just did some graphs. Um, showing the, um, the activation in patients who received two different treatments um, in the study. So, yeah, some, some graphs here. So what are the data showing here? So this one is showing, um, these are t the, the two different colors are the two different study groups. Um, so here we're looking at um, the difference <laughs> between two time points. So um, the difference between the, the activation, I guess, amount uh, between day 100 after receiving this treatment and six months after receiving the treatment. And there's a, there's a little bit of a difference, <laughs> not a lot though. Um, yeah, definitely not as much as we thought we might see. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It looks like the maybe there's more difference in the CD8 cells. Yeah, that, there was that in has the been a, cells. Yeah, that has mm -hmm. been a trend for these. Um, and what's the difference between a CD4 and a CD8 cell? So CD4 cells or C, or helper cells, they're the ones that um, recruit other cells, produce cytokines, make a lot of noise, um, mm -hmm. and and get other things to respond. 
And then CD8 cells are the ones that actually do the killing. So um, you hear about cytotoxic T lymphocytes, so they do direct killing. Right. Um, I think my number one advice to somebody in high school would be to really just follow what you're drawn to. So I think a lot of times kids want to do what their parents tell them, are telling them to do or what they think they should do, which then a lot of times you get into this position where you've been do studying something that you don't really care about and then you are lost. So a lot of times just, just look at like what you're drawn to in class or even outside of class and kind of try to pursue that. I think that is important. The Infectious Disease Sciences Biorepository is a specimen repository that has about 300,000 samples. And these samples span the history of Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center. So we have them from the late 1970s to modern day. And these are samples that are left over from research projects or they're left over from clinical tests. And patients are asked when they come to the center, would you be willing to let us use your leftover material for research purposes? And if they say yes, then we collect their samples and we store them. And that means that we don't have to pay any of the costs associated with collecting the samples. So it's a very resource savvy way to collect a lot of different samples from people. Then we have some almost 30 freezers full of all of these kinds of samples. We have blood samples and um, cellular samples and uh, lung lavage uh, washes from when people have pneumonia. And it lets us study all kinds of interesting infectious disease questions. Um, and other groups use them as well to study their research questions. So our freezers, our naming convention for our freezers, all of our minus 80 freezers are named after Muppets, and all of our minus 20 freezers are named after Snoopy characters. Just helps us uh, talk about the freezers a little more easily. So say, hey, go, go get the whatever. That's right, we say, Kermit. yeah, yeah. Just put it on the second shelf of Kermit, or we can tell somebody, you can pick up your samples from the third shelf of Woodstock or whatever, and, um, and it helps us keep track of them, yeah. So one example of a study that we did from the Biospecimen Repository is we wanted to understand um, people who had had pneumonia that's called idiopathic, which means it's of unknown origin. So we took all of these historic cases of people who had pneumonia where a pathogen couldn't be identified, and um, these were samples from the 80s and 90s, and we were able to test them using modern technologies and identify pathogens in about half of them that were previously unidentified. So we were able to kind of solve the mystery. And that also gave us information about what people are currently being infected, for, uh, infected with that we're not looking for. So it expanded our knowledge of what we should be testing people's lung washes for when they have pneumonia. Hi, my name is Laurel. I am a research technician in Book Lab. Um, I've been working here for about three years now. I worked here two years while in undergrad, and then I went to Peace Corps for two years, and I'm back working as a research technician. I do a lot of different things. There's So one of my um, jobs as a research technician is to um, collect samples and then monitor the movement of samples within um, our IDS repository for different projects and yeah, st different studies. Um, another one of my jobs is to do run neutralizing antibody assays, which is an immuno um, assay that looks at different antibodies in patient serum and how strong their serum is to against this virus that we dilute the serum with, that we mix the serum with. So I was a public health educator. I worked in a rural community and I helped teach um, how to protect people against malaria and cholera. And I did a lot of like wash lessons and um, also uh, like female empowerment lessons. Yeah, yeah. Tell me a little bit about working under a hood. Working under a hood, um, I like it. There, it's very clean. You have to keep your area organized. Um, I mean, I don't know what else you want to know about working under a hood. Does it take a long time to kind of figure out like what you can and can't do? Um, I, well, we were trained pretty well on how to work under the hood carefully and how to maintain, um, you know, proper spacing between different reagents and viruses and samples and stuff like that. So. I, don't know, I felt well prepared when I started working under a hood. <laughs> I mean, I think the biggest thing is you have to make sure you're not cross-contaminating different things. Um, and so you always want to be careful what, how you move your pipette in the hood and just making sure you don't drip on different things. So I went to UW from 2012 to 2016. I got my bachelor's in international studies. 
and I minored in global health. Um, and so how I actually got started in the lab was that I was thinking about doing pre-med um, and one of my friends was working here and she said that I should apply. It's a really great environment to work here and so I did, got in and I really just enjoyed the lab setting, especially in like a high, like well-known research facility versus I guess UW's kind of like old school labs. It was a big contrast. Yeah, future plans. So right now I'm actually applying to grad school. I'm hoping to get a master's in um, infectious diseases, specifically um, for tropical diseases. Um, I'm hoping to go back abroad and do more like global health work. Oh uh, yeah, one piece of advice I have to high schoolers is that once you get into upper level science courses, make sure that you take really good notes and review your notes. Um, and that also when you're in like the actual science field and in science labs, it's okay to make mistakes. That's kind of what science is about. It's about making mistakes, figuring out what you did wrong and then going back and then fixing those mistakes and yeah, stuff like that. Good, good advice even in life. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, my name is Mercy Mirama and um, I'm a lab aide and my day consists of, I first have classes in the morning and then I come to work and then I usually help out with TASO processing, COVID watch, um, PBMC specimen processing, and then I'm also involved in cell culture and neutralizing antibody. So that's my typical day here at the Fred Hatch. So where are you going to school? I'm currently going at University of Washington. I'm majoring in public health, global health, and my future plans are to get my master's degree in public health and then later on proceed into medical fields. I want to get my MD later. Cell culture, what is that exactly? So the cell culture, it's a longitudinal study. It's something that has been ongoing for a while before I even started working, working at the Fred Hatch. And so usually is we get cells from patients and then we'll um, grow the cells in a flask. And then days later we'll plate the cells and then um, we put the virus onto the cells to see how the virus is going to infect the cells. And you pretty much are doing it over and over again just to get the perfect balance of infected cells. Okay, so I've always been interested in science. When I was younger, I knew I wanted to be a doctor, but I didn't know like what major I should major in or what kind of research or anything that I need to do until I came to UW. And then I started networking with people that were either pre-med or already in the healthcare field. And then that's how I got involved with the Fred Hutch um, unit. But one of the things that drove me into doing research was originally I was born in Uganda. And so I've, I've always been interested in like healthcare in general, like why people get sick? Why do some people get treatment? Why don't some people get treatment? How do vaccines work or not work? And like, so from a young age, I've always been intrigued by that. So it's just like, that has always been my focus to try and like understand science. When did you come from Uganda? Um, I was nine, so 11 years ago. I've actually been to one of the talks before with one of the doctors that was doing the um, oncology research in Uganda, and it's pretty fascinating. So um, the advice that I'd give any high school or incoming college freshman is don't give up on your dreams, because there is a saying 100% um, of those who don't give up will end up making or accomplishing their dreams. So whatever you want to do in life, just keep pushing. Take a break if you have to, but don't give up. So I have two pieces of advice, actually. One is that you need to self learn how to self-advocate for yourselves. Uh, uh, and so if you are interested in doing something, then you need to ask if you can do it and go for it. Don't wait for someone to extend an invitation to you. Um, and sometimes that can be a little hard because people who love science tend to be introverted and I definitely fall into that category so it can be hard to ask for opportunities to learn more but um, you have to learn to flex that muscle and do that work and that includes reaching out to labs that might be doing work that you're interested in to see if you can volunteer with them if that's what it takes. So we get requests like that all the time. It's totally normal so you should just go ahead and feel free to do that. And then the other thing that I want to say is that uh, depending on your background, there may come a time when you're around that you feel like you don't belong or that they're going to suddenly figure out that you don't belong. And we call that imposter syndrome, where you feel like at any minute they're going to figure out that you uh, it, you're, it's a mistake that you're here. Um, and I definitely experienced that, especially in graduate school. 
And I am here to tell you that everyone feels that way from time to time. And when you feel that, then flex your muscles again and remind yourself of what you bring to the table because you are always bringing something to the table. You are always valuable um, in some way to somebody. And so you belong in science, every single one of you, if it's something that you want to do.